Namaskar uh, dear friends, welcome to my class once again. Today we shall discuss another essay. Six papers on wheat by Joseph Addison. This is essay number four. In this essay, he talks about another form of writing which he calls pawn and this he considers a false wheat. There is a kind of false wheat which has been used widely in all ages. So this particular false wheat has been used over all ages. This is called pawn. So what is the definition of pawn? What exactly a pawn is? Let us find out. It is defined as a conceit arising from the use of two words that agree in the sound but they differ in the sense. What is the meaning of that? Two words which have the same sound, they agree in the sound, meaning thereby they have the same sound but their sense, the sense they convey, the meanings they convey are completely different. I will give you an example. Suppose I say, is life worth living? And the second line is, it depends on the liver. Now liver, my dear friends, is a pawn. Why liver is a pawn? So what, is the, what was the first line? Is life worth living? Life ta banchi va jogya ki nai, e kaha upar it depend kursi? It depends on the liver. Liver is one word which has two meanings. One is the person who lives the life is a liver. And the second one is the liver that you have. The liver that you have, suppose your liver has gone bad. Naturally, liver it depends on the naturally it depends on the liver. So liver has two meanings. One is who lives a life. And second one is your liver, part of the body. So this is an example. Now the essayist says, the seeds of punning are in the minds of all men. Every writer has some idea or has some fascination, has a liking for this pun. They may be subdued or suppressed by reason reflection and good sense. Now if a writer has reason, a sense of reason, reason is the power of the mind to think. Reflection, reflection is the ability to think deeply and carefully about things and good sense. Suppose a writer has reason, a reflection and a good sense he may not use pawn, but pawn is such a thing that rises up whenever it gets an opportunity. Takku tamay beshe din dabbe ki rakhi pari vane. Every great writer in the history of writing has used pawns. So, imita the essayist says imitation is very natural to us. When it does not raise the mind to polite forms of poetry like poetry, polite forms of writing like poetry, painting, music and other noble arts, it often results in the production of pawns and quibbles. What are quibbles? Quibbles are objection or criticism to a very small thing, on a very small issue. On a very small issue you criticize somebody. So pawns and quibbles if you are not interested in poetry, if you are not interested in uh, high class painting, you are not interested in high class music, you are not in uh, not interested in other forms of art, then obviously you will be interested in pawn and quibbles, criticism on a very small thing. Now, next the writer talks about the history of false wheat. This can be a question. Your question can be, 
give an account of the history of false wheat that Addison talks about in his essay. The essayist says that Aristotle in the 11th chapter of his book of rhetoric, he describes two or three kinds of pawns. And Aristotle names these paragraphs. And what is a paragraph? Paragram is a pawn made by changing one letter, especially the first letter. It is a play upon words or pawn. Paragram is also a form of pawn. It is similar to pawn. Now suppose I say the high cost of living makes my life miserable. Now instead of living, the pawnster makes it, the, the writer makes it loving. The high cost of loving has made my life miserable. He means two different things. Now Aristotle counts these bonds among the beauties of good writing. He says these are beauties. They beautify the writing. They are embellishments, decorations. Beautification so for beautification of life, you know, writing, pawns are used. And he says so that some of the greatest Greek authors have used them in their writing. Cicero, Marcus Tullius, Tullius Cicero, he was a Roman statesman, 106 BC to 46 BC. He has made abundant use of them in his works, plentiful use of them. He has used them in plenty. Now, he lays down rules of oratory, speaking or debating. What is oratory? Speaking or debating. And uh, quotes saying as pieces of wheat. So, what does uh, Cicero do? Cicero, he has laid down rules of oratory, how you can become a good speaker, what are the rules, how can you become a good debater. Now, there the essayist is of the opinion that uh, these are found to be ordinary or arrant pawns. Whatever pawns he has used, those pawns are, Cicero's pawns are very arrant or ordinary pawns. Aristotle has made use of them, Cicero has made use of them, but in Cicero, Aristotle, Aristotle supports them by saying that they are great embellishments in so far as language is concerned. But Cicero says, Cicero's, you, you know, pawn, the pawns that he has used, they are ordinary pawns. Next, the writer says that during the reign of King James I, 1603 to 1625, pawn flourished in England. Most of the writers who were writing during that period, they used pawns. Even the king himself, James the first himself, was a pawnster. He was a person who was fascinated by pawns. Even the bishops and privy councillors, who were privy councillors, the advisors who advised the king of United Kingdom. Those advisors who advised King James the first, they were privy councillors. They were experts in conundrum, C-O-N-U-N-D-R-U-M, conundrum, D-R-U-M. This is a question asked for amusement, typically one with a pawn in its answer. So they were experts in conundrums. If the king the bishops and the privy councillors, these are all high class people. In, in the society that existed then, in the then society, these people occupied the highest positions. So, during this age, pawn appeared with pomp and dignity. Now, they, because pawn was used by dignified people, 
people in highest positions. So pawn was treated with a lot of respect. Earlier they were used, not that earlier they were not used, earlier they were used in merry speeches. One who made a speech, a happy speech and ludicrous compositions. Ludicrous, not of a, a great literary merit, a literary work without a great literary merit. In those works, in those compositions, pawns were used earlier. Now there was a change. Now it, it occupied a significant position. Now it was del delivered from the pulpit, from the dais, a podium, and pronounced in the most solemn manner at the council table. Now these were a pawn was used by the king himself, by the bishops, by the privy councillors, by all these important people in the society. So naturally, pawn acquired a lot of importance in the society. The greatest authors also made use of it in their most serious works. The sermons of Bishop Andrews and the tragedies of Shakespeare are full of them. We find a large number of examples where pawns have been used. The essayist is of the opinion that many great writers have given sanction to this piece of falsehood, but they have give, they have called it by different names. Many great people have used pawns, but they have addressed them or they have called it by different names. The writer's friend told him one, he gives an example of a friend, that friend went to somebody, met him, came back and told the writer this. The writer's friend told him once that he recently had a conversation with the greatest paragrammatist. So he just came back and told the writer that he had a discussion with the greatest paragrammatist. This is also another name for pun. The writer later found out that he had been to a great punster, a person who uses puns in his writing, punster, P-U-N-S-T-E-R. And what was the name of that person? Mr. Swan. The friend also informed that, that Mr. Swan generally talked in paronomasia, P-A-R-O, N O M A S I A Paronomasia and that he sometimes gave in to the Polish, oh, sorry, gave in to the plos, P L O C E. What is plos? A figure of speech in which a word is separated but repeated in order to emphasize a statement. I will give you an example. Plos, the example of it is I am that I am. So what I have done, I have, in order to put emphasis, the writer has written I am two times, but he has separated the two I am's by putting that that, I am that I am. So he has written I am at the beginning, I am at the end, but he has separated them by using that. And uh, this plose is very similar to epijaxis, epijaxis, E-P-I-J-D-U-X-I-S, X, X-I-S, epijaxis. What is epijaxis? This is another repetition. But here, the words are placed very close to each other. I will give you an example. My God, my God. So I have used my God, my God two times and I have kept them very close to each other. Oh, never, never, never give in except to convictions of honor and good sense. So never, 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 three times I have used the word never, I have kept them close to each other. So he says that friend of his, friend of the writer, he comes back and says that Mr. Swan talked to him in para, paronomasia. 
he talked to him in blows and he used epigaxis also while speaking to him these are different forms of or different ways of or different false beats that the writer talks about the friend also reported that mr swan shown in antana classes antana classes a n t a n a c l a s i s antana classes is the repetition of a word in a phrase or sentence in which the second occurrence utilizes a different and sometimes a contrary meaning from the first one word or phrase is used two times first time ra meaning jaha itiba second time jetebe ta ko use karibo tar contrary contrary means opposite meaning ta sit utilize use etebo that is called antana classes example in thy youth learn some craft so that in thy age that that in thy age thou mayst get thy living without craft learn when you are young learn some craft here the meaning of craft is some skill learn some skill so that when you become old you don't have to you don't have to depend on craft here the craft means cunningness you don't have to cheat people you don't have to cheat others you don't have to depend on illegal means so opposite meaning the writer wonders then the writer says okay when pawn has been used for such a long time how it can be banished today when it has been patronized by so many writers so many authors over such a long period of time how it can be banished today the ancient writers were great heroes in writing then he you know goes on telling this this what is the difference between ancient writers and the writers who came later the writers who wrote in ancient days and the writers who came later ancient writers were great heroes of writing they were not concerned about rules or arts of criticism criticism was something that developed later first the authors who wrote during the ancient period they were not concerned about rules and regulations and criticism rules regulations and so they were past masters the quality of literature that they have written the quality of their writing is far superior than the quality of writing that came during the later period but those people were not technically sound technically perfect because technicalities came later kemiti likhibo kon use karibo kemiti use karibo e jo critical aspect of it seta pore asla keno past masters are great masters of writing se mane ete bada bada work of literature produce karchanti jo ta ki ame ajikali au kari paruni ba later period re konosi writer kari paru na but they were not concerned about rules and arts of criticism they excelled later writers in greatness of genius they were geniuses they were great as writers but they fall short of them in terms of accuracy and correctness later writers pore jo mane asle they are accurate and correct because they know the rules and regulations they have rules and regulations to guide them प्रथम रूल्स एंड रेगुलेशंस न थिला तेनु क्वालिटी ऑफ लिटरेचर बहुत बलो होता क्वालिटी ऑफ राइटिंग वाज फार सुपीरियर पर जते रूल्स एंड रेगुलेशंस असला से ते टेक्निकल परफेक्शन आची भेला बट क्वालिटी फेल द मॉडर्न्स कैन नॉट रीच द ब्यूटीज बट दे कैन अवॉइड देयर इंपरफेक्शंस इट इज नेचुरल दैट ग्रेट राइटर्स लाइक Isocrates he was an ancient greek orator plato he was a greek philosopher cicero he was a roman statesman they have blemishes blemishes means certain negative points spots in their writing 
problems in their life uh, writing that authors of much inferior character do not possess to so, semanankar uh, uh, writing re emiti kichi bhul jinsa rahi jautala kintu tanko thu bahut kam quality ro lokonga parvarti parjay re jo man asle semanankar lekha re se sab bhul rahu ni kai because they were technically perfect ancient writers were not technically perfect then he says then the writer says false wit was revived at a time when le- letters were revived but then in then it suddenly vanished it was not used anymore it has sunk in one age and rose in another got a period re uh, what had declared look upon now use only tapare next kichi varsha pare dekhla bel pons were were again being used so the writer is doubtful so the essay says pawn is pawn has survived pawn has disappeared for some time but it has again you know come up so it has survived and there is every possibility that it will raise its head sometime later it has sunk in one age and rose in another so it will recover itself in some distant period when pedantry and ignorance prevail upon wit and sense pedantry what is being pedantic pedantic means a false show of knowledge so when fa- there will be a time there will come a time when false show of knowledge and ignorance lack of knowledge this will be given importance wit will not be given importance intelligence high class writing will not high class uh, you know mind and uh, wit intelligence spark this will not be given importance tal sei bhale gote jugo jete bhale asibo when display of knowledge ko false display of knowledge ko false knowledge ko more importance deha ho sete bhale pon poni revive karibo writer ko chanti the writer is of the opinion that there is the possibility of the posterity degenerating into a race of monsters if we support pawn a time will come when the next generation will become monsters so they will use a large number of mujhe aji ta ko criticize no karu in my writing if i don't write that it is a false wit tell the posterity those who come later they will you make use of pawns in their writing and they will become monsters in this country acrostics what is acrost- acrostics we have discussed a poem or word puzzle in which certain letters form a word for example teacher t for something e for something a for something like that so that make a teacher so that is a acros- that is an example of ac- acrostics that we discussed last time also they have been handed down with great secrecy and applause so he says in this country of ours acrostics survived acrostics were used acrostics were written they were used by writers so if, if acrostics could be written and given prominence why can't pawns be given prominence so look when the acrostics like it are ताकू यूज करबे को रिवाइव कर देले आ थरे तले ये रिवाइव करे रो सुविधा कोन देयर इज एन एपिग्राम आल्सो एपिग्राम सब ऑलरेडी बीन यूज्ड ए पिथी सेइंग अ रिमार्क पिथी मींस वेरी शॉर्ट अब्रीज्ड बट इट कैन बी एक्सपैंडेड इनटू मेनी सेंटेंसेस सो ही गिव्स एग्जांपल ऑफ एपिग्राम ही सेज इट्स टाइटल इज व्हिचेस प्रेयर दैट फेल इनटू वर्ड्स when read backward and forward so see the lines of a verse lines of a poem is called words so seta emiti lekha hitla if you read from one side to the other it is a course and when you read it from the other side to the first it is a blessing so the same line meant or same lines meant two different things 
So if such things have survived, if such things have been used by writers in the past, why can't poems be used? The essay says that there is dullness on both sides. He says uh, whether they, uh, you know, they, they are weak writers or Tory writers. Whigs are the reformists and Tories are the conservatives. So whether it is a conservative writer or whether it is a reformist writer, both of them have used pawns. So, no, no, I don't say why there are Whigs or why there are Tories. Kain ki samane Whig hele, kain ki samane Tory hele. Mu sethre kichi question karu ne. But my point is, they have used anagrams and acrostics in their writing. This is what I object to. Jemti ame koi ba, je Christian writer, Hindu writer, Muslim writer. I have to use the use of the use of the use Hindu, Muslim, Hindu, Muslim, Christian, the use of the use the society divided on the basis of religion. More point these people have used acrostics and anagrams in their writing. Anagrams and acrostics are examples of falsehood. And finally, he gives, you know, a way, a method to distinguish wheat from pawn. He says, I'm a wheat out pawn. Which one is true wheat and which one is false wheat? He calls pawn a false wheat. Tell a false wheat to true wheat, how to distinguish, how to differentiate? He says, pawn means use of two words, use of one, two words which agree in sound word is used two times they have similar sound or two words which produce the similar produce similar sounds but they differ in meaning the only way to try it is to translate into different language amita ko a different language ko translate karta is life worth it it depends on the liver. I mean, that translate karta ba. I mean, that translate karta ba. Odiya kuchhi kono ba. Liver ra meaning ba. I mean, jaha le gotta likhe We can't write two things. Liver ra meaning ta kono hala. One who lives is a liver. Our liver is a part of the body. It's an organ of the body. I mean, jodi liver likhle sna there is confusion. I mean, jodi particular genes ra likhle. Zibona banchi ba jogiya ki. Ha. The particular meaning liver meaning the person who lives. And I more liver refers to that organ. So the essay says that if it bears the test, it may be called true, true weak. This is an example of if it passes the test, you translate that word. And that word gives you a particular meaning. So, it is confusion. There is no confusion. It bears the test. It may be called true. But if it vanishes in the experiment, you are not able to determine what the meaning is. So, that you are not able to find out what exactly the meaning is. Then it disappears. It vanishes in the experiment. And if it vanishes in the experiment, it is an example of thought. We have some confusion. If there is one meaning, there is no confusion. So, this is what the writer says at the end. He says, this is how by translating pawns into one particular language, another language, we can find out whether this is a true wit or whether it is a false wit. Thank you very much. I hope this helps you. Namaskar.